My dear friends, peace is a popular word, but it is an impossible reality because everybody chases and not many find it. And there is absence of peace, first of all, in our own personal lives, in our family, and in our local situations, national, international, we have absence of peace. And if you go back to the history and filter it, how many years of peace? They say it's only about 300 years in all the history. Hardly we can call peaceful. In other words, as someone said, all our life we try to find peace. We try to keep peace. We try to make peace. We try to establish peace until we rest in peace. This is not to be negative, but this is the reality. And there are people who pursue peace by drugs, by diversion, because they can't stay, stand still, they can't sit still. So they need diversion every time. And that's why if you re recognize this time of Corona, people are p restless. Why? Because they need diversion. Every day they have diversion, they go out shopping, this and that. And at the time of Corona, we have to stay indoors and people get restless, disturbed. And some of the people find peace by their entertainment. They, have, they watch TV all along, all time, night, continuously, one after the other. Or some kind of other entertainment in their life, like pubs, clubs, parties, things like that. And some people find peace shopping because they want to do something all the time. Shop, 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 shop. And some people think unless there is social change, there won't be peace. And others think that unless there is economic change, there won't be peace. Only we can have peace when we fix external things. That's what. But today, Jesus is talking something different. He says, I give you peace. I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives. My dear friends, the context of Jesus was when he was almost bidding farewell to his disciples. They knew that he was going away. They were troubled. They do not know. They, they would be lonely after he goes. And who would lead them? Who would guide them? And a situation of knowing not what they will do after this. It's a confusion. And in this time, Jesus says, peace to you. Can you believe? He knows what is going to happen. He sees everything that is going to happen. He is going to be on the cross. And then everyone is going to desert and all that. And then he still says, and he knows what his disciples would be up to. And then he still says, peace to you. Not like others, I am giving you peace. Let your hearts not be troubled and not afraid. Who is the source of this peace? If you have heard of this, I do not know. Not the spotted owl, it is called screech owl. It has its nest on the tree, but small bugs, they're called maggots, they, they can destroy this owl and their progeny in moments by infecting them. So what do these owls do to survive? They bring blind snakes and put them along with in, the, um, in their nest, in the tree. And what do they do? They eat these bugs. 
they happily grow with them and stay with them with these all the birds and then things carry on who has taught this owl the screech owl to do this it's only the creator otherwise where else who else so the source of this is the creator to bring these blind snakes and put and then they can survive same thing if you take the what you call the cobweb they excrete some kind of uh, gum so when the small um, these things bugs come then they get stuck up and they eat and survive but whereas they themselves can go about walking how come the spider can go about walking how come because Uh, from their uh, grants they also emit an oil that can help them to walk and go around and who has given this is it not the creator or else where would they get it so in other words peace can come only from the creator peace is not something that we do not have difficulties we do not have problems we have comfortable life no we will have all that in spite of that in spite of whatever the situation we will still be at peace and jesus was knowing everything that's going to be bad and then still he was at peace and he could say these words So my dear friends as Paul would say in Philippians letter to Philippians 4 4 to 7 rejoice always never be sorrowful about anything just pray to God with gratitude why because God is going to give it and the peace that will be beyond you can imagine any man can imagine it gives you in your heart in your mind keep that safe that's what st paul would say my dear friends how did shadrach mezek and abednego in spite of the fact that they were going into the fiery furnace kept their peace it's because uh, they were saying that the god our god will deliver us that's why Jesus says here the ruler of this world is coming but he has no power over me so do not worry and i am saying this before these things happen i am of aware of what is going to happen so i have i am a all knowledgeable person and my dear friends everything is in control so we need to believe this god who is in control of everything so there is objective peace there is subjective peace objective peace is external situations subjective peace is that god can take away the external situations also god can give in spite of the external situations the internal peace that is subjective peace and he can give both my dear friends we had pax romana but that is by violence and force but this is something that god only can give and nobody else and in the bible if you do not know god there is no peace because peace with god peace with family and in other words with peace at yourself peace with others this is possible only if you know god and god points to the real peace shalom is used 250 times in the bible and what does that mean shalom means completeness the jewish used to greet shalom completeness contentment well being prosperity on all levels not peace from uh, the troubles from your wife or 
quarrelsome situation from your husband. This is not what they meant when they greeted you. What they meant is, all goodness follow you in your life. That's what they meant. My dear friends, Jesus is promising this peace at the time when he was in the most traumatic moment of his life. And he knows that he lives cross at that very time in anticipation and knows about his disciples' distress. So what I'm trying to say, my dear friends, today, peace can be ours in spite of whatever the situation is. And I can tell you from my own life, my dear friends, when you have troubles, when you see that enemy is stronger than you, and when you do not have everything clear about the future, and when your resources are very scanty, and when you cannot trust anybody, I think that's when you cling to God because He loves you, He has died for you, and He has the power to rise again, and He has risen for you. But if you want to do this, you have to be at peace with God. Romans 5 1 speaks of gospel of peace by St. Paul. When you are at peace, when God justifies, because He justifies you, He cleanses you, He purifies you, then you can be at peace. And we pursue the peace because God has promised it. What did He say? Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. That means it's a deposit. It is a gift. It is a grace. That's why he says, I live with you, the peace. My peace I give to you. It's a gift. My dear friends, but we have to make it our own. That means we have to be right with God. So today, we talk about St. Anthony of Padua. Who was in love with God? Who was ready to die? Martyrdom. And he was so much in love that he had the intimate, most intimate relationship with Jesus. And we know how he is to entertain Jesus, child Jesus in his arms. And my dear friends, he was at peace with God and that is the reason he could do so many wonders and miracles. And even when his father was in trouble, as we already heard about it, he was at peace because God can give that peace no matter what happens around us, surrounding us. So my dear friends, Jesus is inviting us today to rest in him because he has control of things and he loves us beyond anything else. And he knows everything that we go through. I have told you before it takes place so that when it takes place, you may believe, Jesus says. So my dear friends, let us ask God to give that peace in our lives because no matter whatever you have, whatever you make, whatever you try, you will not have peace until you rest in him. And that's what's in Augustine would say, our hearts are very, O Lord, until they rest in you.